In this video, we're gonna add functionality to our NFT landing page to see if our visitor owns one of our NFTs. If you want to learn how to use this project to create a landing page for your NFT collection and deploy it for free, go check out this video first. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to update your project with the latest improvements and show you how they work. And if you haven't created a collection yet, go check out this video on how to create a 10K collection. I'm gonna assume that you've already followed the steps in the previous video and forked my repository. My NFT landing page repo is now at version 1.1.0. To get the new updates into your fork repository, open your repo in VS Code, the same one that you created in the previous video. Open a new terminal and type git pull https slash slash github.com slash codestacker slash nft dash landing dash page dot git main and press enter. This will pull the updates into your local repo. You should now see some new folders and files. Now go to the source control tab and click the sync changes button. This will push the updates to your GitHub repo. If you don't see this button, be sure that you have the GitHub repositories extension installed in VS Code. All right, let's review what has changed. Now first, there is a structure change. So I've added a CSS folder and a JavaScript folder, and I moved the style.css and the app.js files into those respective folders. I also broke out the countdown function into its own JavaScript file called countdown.js. So the app.js file is now only used for the MetaMask functionality. In the previous video, we got MetaMask connected and got our visitor's wallet account number. Now we're gonna use their wallet address to see if they own any of our NFTs. So let's open up the app.js file and you'll wanna change collection name to your collection name. I've added some new functions here. So let's scroll down here. And first we're gonna look at check owner. If we have an account, then this is gonna call a Netlify function. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. This is going to securely check our visitors NFTs to see if they own any that are from our collection. And because we're limited to 50 NFTs per page, we may have multiple pages to check. So we're gonna handle that with this functionality. So while we have a next page, we're going to continue checking. So now if we scroll down here to update status text, we have a new text field in our HTML file, and this is going to be populated with a status message for our visitor. So this is where we're going to insert the collection name, and we're gonna let them know what we're doing. So first we're gonna say, we're checking to see if you own any CodeCats. If we find that they do, then we're gonna change it to say, you do own CodeCats. Let's see how many. So it will continue to check, and then finally, after we go through all of their NFTs, we'll either say that they don't own any of our NFTs or we'll let them know how many of our NFTs they own. And then we're going to change how many dots appear after our message. And this is sort of an animation. It's just gonna change the text periodically to let the visitor know that we're still checking. And here's an example of what that looks like. The more NFTs a visitor owns, the longer this check is gonna take. So I'm gonna look at speeding this up in the future. Now let's take a look at the backend Netlify functions. You're gonna see this new folder here called functions. And then within that is owner.js. Let's open that. This function is going to run on the server and not on the front end of our website. This makes the code here more secure. Since we'll be using our NFT port API, we want to be sure that we keep it secret. So we're gonna pull in some environmental variables here. And these are gonna come from Netlify. And I'll show you how to add those in a bit. The first one is our contract address from our NFT collection. And the second is our NFT port API key. You should already have an NFT port API key if you've been following along with my videos. But if you don't, just go to nftport.xyz to sign up for free. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do in this function is get our wallet and page numbers. And these are gonna come from our query string parameters. And then we're gonna check to see if we have a wallet. If we don't have a wallet, then this is just gonna return is owner false. If we do have a wallet, then we're going to get owned NFTs. So let's go down to that function. So here we're using the NFT port accounts endpoint and we're passing in the wallet number. Then we're using our NFT port API key. And this is gonna return all of the wallets NFTs. So as we move down here, we're gonna fetch this data. And since we're limited to 50 results per query, we're gonna check to see how many pages there are. And because every query tells us how many total NFTs there are, we can calculate how many pages there are. So we'll get the total, and then we'll find out how many pages by dividing that by 50. Then we'll loop through each NFT and check to see if it's one of ours by checking the contract address. 
If it is one of ours, then we'll keep track of it by adding it to our additions array. And then we're going to return an object. This object is going to return is owner, which is going to be true or false depending on what was found. We'll also return our additions, and then we're going to return the next page number. If there is no next page, meaning that we're on the last page, then we're going to return null. Next, you'll need to add your environmental variables to your Netlify project. To go to your Netlify dashboard and open your NFT landing page project. Here's mine. We'll open this up. And now we'll need to go to site settings and then build and deploy and then environment. And here are the environment variables. You'll see that I've already added mine. You'll want to edit your variables and then add a new variable and just add in contract address and NFT port auth. Now the spelling and capitalization is important. So contract underscore address and NFT port underscore auth, and then enter your values for those. After you're done, click save. Now back in VS Code, be sure that you saved any changes that you made and then go into the source control tab and then enter a commit message. You can type in whatever you want. This just describes what changes you made. After you've entered that, click the checkbox here to commit and then sync your changes. Give Netlify a few minutes to deploy the changes and you should be able to connect a wallet and it will check to see if the wallet owns any of your NFTs. Now, I have a wallet here that owns three of my NFTs. And when I connect my main wallet, which has 9,700 NFTs still, it takes a few minutes to complete the search, but it will show that I own 9,703 CodeCat NFTs. With that, let's release some more CodeCats into the wild. I'm releasing these in batches because I'm still refining the reveal process and of course documenting and creating videos as I go to help you learn along with me. The first two batches were just 0.002 ETH. The current floor price is 0.013. I don't want to dilute the collection too much, but I also want them to be affordable. So I've decided to release every batch based on the average sale price of the past 30 days. The average has been 0.004. So that will be the price of this batch. And every batch going forward will use this same formula. Check the link in the description to see what's available right now. These will probably sell out fast. The last batch sold out in just over an hour. So by the time you watch this, they may already be gone, but be on the lookout for more batches dropping routinely. Now that we know if a visitor owns one of our NFTs and we even know which ones they own, in the next few videos, we're gonna add more features to our landing page. We'll show the owner details about the NFTs they own. We'll let them reveal their purchased NFTs. We'll give them access to secret pages for owners only, and we'll even allow them to mint new NFTs directly from our site. If you have any issues, join our Discord community. I try to answer as many questions as I can, but I can't get to every one of them. But fortunately, there are many others in the community that can help as well. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.